Hey, this is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and today I'm gonna show you a BC Rich guitar and uh, tell you uh, about it and what I think about it. And I know some of you uh, find my videos long that I talk too much, so I'm gonna say this for you. Don't buy this guitar. So, you can stop watching now. Bye. And uh, yeah, let's start, at th let's start at the top, as usual. Uh, this seems to have uh, good, like, die-cast enclosed tuners on the outside. They are BC Rich branded. And, uh, well, they seem solid and they seem, uh, I don't know, I, think, I don't think they will break. But on the other hand, with the, when you have these kind of tuners, you used to have a gear ratio. Uh, in other words, how many times, like, the turns on these you need to make one turn of these. Usually it's uh, 15 turns on the, this one to make this go all the way around. And... Uh, that makes it precise and makes it easy to like fine adjust the tuning. Uh, but on this guitar, on the other hand, you don't get that. This is very much closer to uh, vintage tuners that are not as precise. And uh, cause the thing is, when you the slightest turn of this and your pitch goes up and down, and it's like yeah, not very precise. It's hard to get like not hard to fine tune your tuning, basically. Uh, we have this giant headstock on this maple neck, and uh, yeah, it looks amazing. But on the other hand, I mean, the <laughs> where the headstock joins the neck, it's so thin, and this is so big. So I suppose a lot of people break these off. We have a rosewood fingerboard, and the neck in itself is yeah, it's slim. It's uh, yeah, feels it feels slim, easy to get around, and has a kind of nice finish. And the frets on this rosewood board, well, what can I say? They are <sighs> they are very uneven, um, so it buses in all kinds of strange places. Not like even the s it's the same fret on the same or all the strings. It could be just one string that buses in some place and it's all over the neck it's very bad the fretwork is horrible actually and speaking of the neck this be uh, neck is needs some kind of relief this is a slipknot signature model by the way uh, so it's yeah mick thompson from slipknot so it has a seven here on the truss rod cover and uh, it has a hate inlay here, which I have covered in pink nail polish. Because you don't want to hate, you want to love, don't you? Well, the truss rod. The neck isn't like super straight. It's, yeah. It has a bow to it to make, yeah, to make it playable all the way. And you adjust that with the truss rod. And in this case, you need to have it relieved, and uh, it's uh, as loose as it can get, and you still need more, so, uh, yeah, it's buzzing all over these frets. And there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, besides putting on probably heavier strings, that will maybe help this. So, yeah, horrible frets. The neck in itself is, yeah, faulty, really. So, next is the body, and we have, um, it's black and black and black. <laughs> this guitar is really black. And uh, this binding, it's really a binding, it's not painted on. You can tell, since this is a used guitar, and of course, you, when you have this pointy guitar, you smash the edges. And you can tell, it's, it's real binding. But the paint job is... Probably the worst paint job I have ever seen <laughs> on an electric guitar. It's very uneven. And, uh, I mean, the surface is, like, horrible. And uh, you can tell on the... Because they tape these... Uh, the, the binding. And then you remove it after you painted it. But, I don't know, I think they let the paint dry for too long. So you can really tell where they have 
just ripped the paint along with the tape. So it looks kind of horrible. Um, <laughs> the body is basswood. Basswood is a uh, great wood for guitars. It's rather soft. And when you have this kind of bridge, that's like one, yeah, one anchor point, basically. It's not like a tunomatic where there's two. Oh, where there's a string through, and this is like just one part of it. Uh, this get all gets all the pull, and uh, you can tell that the wood is soft because this. I mean, the where it's anchored, they have actually started to move in the wood, so it's tilting towards the neck. And the bridge itself, it's a cheap uh, version of the more expensive uh, ones you can find on the BC Rich. I have one myself. I have an 80s uh, BC Rich NG Series Mockingbird, which has the same problem, by the way, with the tilting of the bridge. But uh, this is really cheap, made out of what they sh normally call pot metal. So cheap metal. And the, I mean, when I try to adjust the bridge, because you're going to do individual uh, adjustments, but then you have to move the bridge because it's sitting too close to the neck. Again, a design or manufacturing fault. Uh, well, the grooves were one of the, for one of the screws, yeah, they gave up basically. So I had to get new holes and get, like make new grooves for these screws that are bigger. So now it's holding together, hopefully. You get a three-way switch and you get a single volume control that's um, yeah, probably more used like an on-off switch because it's very out of the way. You can't do volume swells or anything like that. And two uh, special design uh, pickups, you'll get to hear them. And uh, yeah, the pickups sound really good in my opinion. See what you think. And the electronics seem kind of solid. So uh, that's good, but it doesn't like weigh up all the other problems with this guitar. So that's why I come to the conclusion that you maybe you should just avoid it. I don't know where it's made. I can't tell anywhere. There's no serial number or uh, anything that points to it. My guess is China based on experience from other guitars. If you have the information, please leave a comment. And I think this is very much the same guitar as the Kerry King model, the cheaper ones. Um, that have like, that are black and have like a white tribal thing, paint job on them. And the hardware is chrome on those, but I think otherwise it's basically the same guitar and they have dot inlays. This um, has no inlays, which I think is kind of nice. Uh, yeah, so now you get to hear it and I try to play it. As I said, a lot of the frets are buzzing. Uh, you probably won't hear it as much when it's not, uh, when you don't hear it acoustically, but yeah. I'll play it. Here's a clean sound to start you off. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, let's add some overdrive. And finally some high gain and delay. In my opinion, it sounds great. I mean, these are humbuckers and uh, yeah, they have a good sound to them. It's a shame that they are sitting on this crappy guitar. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about the neck, there's even more. It has this angle where it meets the body and it's like, it's not straight <laughs> compared to the body. It's like tilting so much. And uh, that makes uh, you, f it forces you to have the bridge really high. So when I took the neck off, because I had to check it, and uh, I found that there was a, yeah, they have shimmed it. They had a, like a piece of wood underneath here. So I removed that and made it better. It's not perfect in any way. 
So now I could actually lower the bridge a bit and the action's better, but again, since it's buzzing all over the place, not because of like the regular action, but because of the fretwork, it's not really playable anyway. This has been the Swedish guitar node complaining about a beast rich warlock. Slipknot special signature. Mick Tonson model. I hope you found this useful and uh, as I said in the beginning, avoid these guitars. See you soon. Bye.